that's based uh, largely on the number of dependents, you can't have that same dependence on multiple returns or things would get crazy. So no other person can take any of the five tax benefits just listed based on the, fall, uh, on the qualifying child. So if no other person can take any of the five tax benefits just listed on the qualifying child, if you and any other person claim the child as a qualifying child, the following rules apply. For purposes of these rules, the term, quote, parent, end quote, means a biological or adoptive parent of an individual. It doesn't include a step parent or foster parent unless that person has adopted the individual. So if only one of the persons uh, is the child's parent, the child is treated as the qualifying child of the parent. That would seem somewhat uh, logical in that case. So, so if the parents, uh, parents file a joint return together and can claim the child as a qualifying child, the child is treated as the qualifying child of the parents. So obviously if the parents are married, then they would be on the filing joint return, you would think. If the parents don't file a joint return together, but both parents claim the child as a qualifying child, the IRS will cheat the child as the qualifying child of the parent with whom the child lived for the longer period of time. So that's the tie-breaking factor if you find yourself in this situation, typically. Two people saying this child qualifies for them. You've got joint custody situation. Both of them are wanting to claim the taxes. If you both put the social security number on your returns, the IRS will most likely question those returns. And then <laughs> you're gonna have to log in the number of days and say, this kid lived with me longer than that deadbeat over there. And, <laughs> and, then, you can, and then you could go from, and then you could go from there and try to figure it out again. But, but again, it would be nice to have that figured out before that point in time. Also realize that if you file a tax return, whoever files first, the tax return might go through more likely because the social security number has not yet been recognized. The second person to try to claim the child might get a kickback of the return from the e-filing status, the IRS claiming that it's already been claimed, in which case, you might say, well, yeah, but they claimed it incorrectly. So you might then try to try to paper file the return so that you make your claim legitimately, which could delay the refund and again, get you into this kind of uh, this kind of battle, which again, could delay refunds and usually benefits lawyers. So if the child lived with each parent for the same amount of time, the IRS will treat the child as the qualifying child of the parent who had the higher adjusted gross income, AGI, everything else equal. The AGI for the higher person is the tiebreaker. Why? Because that's probably the person who is providing the support for the child in terms of financial support, at least. So if no parent can claim the child as a qualifying child, the child is treated as the qualifying child of the person who had the highest AGI, adjusted gross income, for 2023. Same rationale. If a parent can claim the child as a qualifying child, but no parent does so, uh, does so claim the child, the child is treated as the qualifying child of the person who had the highest AGI for 2023, but only if that parent's AGI is higher than the highest AGI of any parent of the child who can claim the child. All right, example, this would be helpful. Your child, Jay, meets the conditions to be a qualifying child for both you and your parent. Jay doesn't meet the conditions to be a qualifying child of any other person, including Jane's, Jay's other parent. So under the rules just described, you can claim Jay as a qualifying child for all of the five tax benefits just listed for which you otherwise qualify. For par uh, Your parents can't claim any of those five tax benefits based on Jay. However, if your parents AGI is higher than yours, uh, and you do not claim Jay as a qualifying child, Jay is the qualifying child of your parent. Okay, so let me see if I can break this down a bit. We've got Jay here is, is the child. It's between you, the parent, and your parents, right? And the other spouse we're saying is out of the picture because the kid, Jay, doesn't qualify for, for the other parents. So it's between you and your parents. Now, obviously, if you want to claim the child, then you would think that it would go to you because you're the parent. However, you can imagine a situation where maybe you it would be more beneficial that, that your parents would claim the child since he also qualifies under them as well. So if you don't claim the child as a dependent, that would be no one has claimed the child as a dependent 
And your parents then, since they still qualify and you didn't take the qualification as the first one to be able to, possibly they can take the child as a dependent. As you can imagine from tax planning standpoint, there could be scenarios where that might be the most beneficial thing to happen, right? So for more details on, on something like that, uh, you can look uh, in examples, you can see publication 501, if you have those kind of complex examples and you wanna do some possible, maybe there's some ability for some tax planning uh, in there as well, so, okay.